discuss. Uh, and we will, no doubt. Uh, it's the front pages as they arrive. And uh, as we say, joining us tonight for those headlines, writer and columnist Christina Patterson and author and Times columnist Matthew Syed. Thanks for being with us again. Uh, front pages first of all those papers. There is The Independent on Sunday, which reveals that Jeremy Corbyn is considering committing to NATO's target of spending 2% of GDP on defence, uh, aiming to head off accusations that he's weak on national security. Mail on Sunday, meanwhile, claiming a leaked White House memo reveals that Tony Blair had backed the Iraq war a year before the actual invasion. Sunday Times goes with the reports that two key witnesses in the VIP paedophile sex abuse scandal are being helped by a charity that uh, is uh, using a form of therapy which is controversial. Observer goes with a letter from a group of bishops calling on the Prime Minister to increase the number of refugees that the UK is prepared to take from 20 to 50,000. Sunday Telegraph revealing taxpayers are facing a bill of up to £150 million to defend British soldiers sued by enemy fighters who claim their human rights have been breached. And it is the SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon there on the front of the Scotland on Sunday, Sunday edition. Uh, conference speech in which she aimed to appeal to working class voters, it says. And the Sunday Express now says that the benefits of statins may have been exaggerated. New research revealing the drugs adding only three days to a patient's life. Of course, the Express has championed them in the past. So let's see what Christina and Matthew have made of that. It is indeed the Independent, which is your first choice. Corbyn may commit to NATO target. <laughs> Labour leader considers pledging to spend 2% of GDP on defence, unless, of course, they change their mind later on. Well, let's not call it a flip-flop, shall no, we? All right, OK. <laughs> Another one. Another one. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, this... <laughs> that's that's the, the figures there. But the question is, does that include nuclear weapons? Uh, it, I believe it doesn't. I believe well, it doesn't from Jeremy Corbyn, sorry. who today has been given um, an, an, another honorary role with the CND, of which he's been a member since 1966. Um, apparently, the new role with the uh, CND is more of an honorary thing than his previous role, where he was a vice president. But um, somebody pointed out today that he's sort of collecting honorary positions of protest groups like student badges. But this would be, this would be um, quite a, a flip-flop on a par with John McDonald's. Um, the shadow chancellor is about um, supporting the uh, Tories' uh, fiscal commitment to, what would you call it, fiscal... Responsibility. Responsibility. <laughs> well, there's Prudence. A there's a phrase for Rectitude. it anyway, I can't remember. <laughs> but, but, I mean, Cor Corbyn hates... He hates spending on military stuff, but he's discovering the compromises of leadership. But here's the question. If you are going to spend 2% of GDP and you're not spending on nuclear weapons, you've actually got a pretty big defence budget to, to play with. To spend on peacekeeping predominantly. But, but I'm with you, Christina. <laughs> The Corbyn brand is about principle. Mm -hmm. What you see is what you get. We know what Corbyn's about when it comes to defence. Two basic principles. One, he doesn't want Trident. He's a member of CND and he kept that honorary role. But secondly, he wants to spend less. But this is a, co it's, it's a political fudge. He's prepared to spend more than he was previously prepared to commit to, 2%, the NATO target, in order to look tougher on defence and perhaps to secure support from his party well, the, yeah, to get I mean, rid of the nuclear... This is what the in that won't wash, by the way. The, no. the people in the front bench who want Trident are not going to say, OK, we'll get rid of it if you spend it on peacekeeping. They think that Trident is what we need to secure mutually assured destruction yeah. in order to secure our defence. So that's not going to wash. But this is a political fudge. Christine is absolutely right. This is Corbyn... Say that again, Matthew, more loudly. <laughs> Christina is absolutely right. This is Corbyn beginning to get his head around the compromises the that are an inevitable part of political yeah. leadership. Right. OK, let's uh, head to the observer uh, in terms of political balance on this. Uh, but Christina and Matthew are going once more for the independence on Sunday and Jeremy Corbyn's defence spending, which doesn't seem to be something that's featured so far in his approach to politics. Well, uh, I think we need a kind of a graph where we can plot the positions pre his election to be party leadership and the positions one week on, two weeks on, three weeks on, because those seem to change by the minute. Since Jeremy Corbyn is 
completely opposed to nuclear weapons and has just today been made something like vice president of um, CND. If he's going to increase spending, a commitment to spending to 2% in order to be taken seriously internationally, he's going to have a great long shopping list of weapons. And I'm wondering which weapons are going to be acceptable on the list and which ones aren't, because that's a lot of weapons to buy if you're committing to 2%. I don't know. What do you think, well, Matthew? Well, what they are saying on the inside of the Independent on Sunday is that a lot of this will be spent on increasing the capacity for peacekeeping. Oh, That'll right. be part of the defence. But, you know, Corbyn has two pretty core cool principles on defence. One, he is definitely CND. He, wants, he doesn't want to renew Trident. And one can understand the principle, even if one disagrees with it. The other thing he said consistently is, I want to reduce expenditure on defence. The fact that he's now, for tactical reasons, to look strong on defence, prepared to increase the budget, and I agree with you, he's got to struggle to spend that amount of money, given that he doesn't really want many weapons that are capable of uh, wreaking mass damage. Um, I think he's going to look rather foolish. And what, I does, think and what a... does peacekeeping mean anyway? Does that mean you stride into Damascus and say, we are for peace, you know, we're wearing white T-shirts? I mean, how much does that cost and how effective is it as but, a strategy? But isn't it interesting that this person who was elected on the principle that what you see is what you get. Absolutely. I'm going to stand by my ideological commitments. He is now looking for tactical compromises for, for reasons of well, political appearance. Although we ought to reflect that he turned up at CND today, True. where he has uh, basically supported their cause for 50 years or so, mm. uh, and has indicated he's not going to um, forego that, that he stays with that principle. But, I mean, the, the, the interesting, as you say, question is, if you're not going to spend that money on a nuclear weapon system, what on earth are you going to buy with all that cash? Well, it's you going, know, you, it's you going probably to... have the biggest land-based army yeah, well, of, of it, it, any it, European absolutely. nation. Absolutely, or you're going to end up with, you know, kind of cluster bombs or, you know, something not particularly savoury. It's a bit like DFID when, when uh, if you commit to... And I'm all for, actually... Um, well, up to point I'm all for ring fencing, uh, spending on international development. But you then end up sometimes in a ludicrous situation where you're kind of blowing money on projects that you, you don't have the infrastructure for just because you've got to be seen to spend the money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's precious taxpayers' money. OK.